Welcome in studio with the New York Times best-selling author John Gilstrap, Mr. John Gilstrap. Good morning, sir. Retired safety engineer, firefighter, EMT as well. Also, Jefferson County prosecuting attorney Matt Harvey. Good morning. Good morning, Matthew. Good morning. Yeah, okay, man. And uh, relax. He has no criminal jurisdiction whatsoever yeah. in Berkeley County. None. None. That's no. No responsibilities. Quite frankly, established that. So I don't have to wear these handcuffs. I didn't even know that you. That's not something we but normally use as prosecutors. Um, choosing to, <laughs> like, like verbal handcuffs in the courtroom, maybe. I, that works. I, okay. I, yep. Sorry, John. That's right. <laughs> Our guest in this segment is a candidate for auditor, Marianne uh, Claydor. She is uh, a candidate who has run previously. We've had her on the program via telephone, but never in person before. Marianne, good morning and welcome into the studio. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're up with the birds. Oh, you are. You came <laughs> out of St. Albans this morning? Yeah. No, we, oh, I mean, no, you didn't drive in this morning. No, we, we um, came up last night, but we didn't get up here to about uh, almost midnight. So. It's a pretty ambitious drive for an interview. Well, I like to be able to look people in their faces. I don't, I don't know. What are you seeing so far? I don't know. <laughs> we'll see what the Lord reveals. Yeah. So. <laughs> We have Give her a donut. 20, 20 <laughs> minutes to get it out. Yeah, we have some donuts here. If you like a donut before you go, that'll, that'll help. Very, very nice fresh package. Probably get me all, my mouth all dried up and everything. Right. Well, you can wait till after the <laughs> Yeah, you, You've been an auditor and you've worked in the auditor's office. Yes. Yeah, tell us about your experience. Well, I worked there for 22 years and uh, performing financial and compliance audits mm -hmm. uh, for the West Virginia State Auditor's Office. And during that time, also uh, prepared uh, financial statements for local governments, um, provided training. I was one of the auditors um, that if there were a new bookkeeper came in, a new chief tax deputy, e even people don't understand, we also are responsible for uh, prosecutor offices, but they mainly have that one fund we look at for as far as the prosecutor. Oh, what fund is that? Uh, the um, forfeiture. They get a part of the fund. forfeiture money when the sheriff seizes it. How, how's Harvey's <laughs> office been grading out so far? <laughs> I don't. This is not one of my areas. She hasn't been so in there since, oh, that's true. since I've been in yeah, office. Yeah, that's yeah. that too. When was your last year in the office? Um, in 2014, my son became paralyzed for the neck down. Oh, I'm sorry. And he was on a ventilator. But I have still had my hands, so I prepare financial statements mm -hmm. and I still balance help assist with balancing out and I and he passed away in 2020 oh so since he passed away I've done a lot more training and th this is one of the reasons I decided to run again I mm -hmm. know people are like why should she keep running well because the problems are getting worse and worse and I and I knew I was tired of sitting back and just looking and knowing that I can fix this, I can get this to the point of what the auditor's office should be. I, you know, I have a bigger vision. What, what are the problems right now as you identify them? So I, I think we have staffing is always a, an issue. And the part that is responsible for the training, I, I don't think the public really is aware of the importance of the auditor's office. Mm -hmm. um, we approve the budgets of local governments, and that's the county um the county commission, the municipalities, mm -hmm. and we also respond. We're called the supervisor of public offices in that capacity, and it brings on with it a lot of responsibility, which is providing training, providing guidance whenever there are new pronouncements that come down that relate to accounting. Then we are responsible for making sure that the local government's records are in compliance with those rules and those regulations. When the legislature, oh my gosh, this last time, I think they gave like about five funds, <laughs> five new funds, which had to do with the EMS, enhancement salary, fire protection, and, um, the opioid settlement money. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to give guidance for that, and we. We've been, we'll, we have been assigning like fund numbers, but about the accountability. Mm -hmm. I'm more about the accountability and to make sure that people are educated on how they can spend the money. Now, it is their choice on what, you know, what particular items they decide to spend it on. However, they, we, 
we don't want to do hand slaps after. Mm -hmm. Let's be preventive. And I just feel like West Virginia, and I am a West Virginian born and raised, we have been very reactive. We wait till things happen and if the house is on fire and then we decide we want to come and try to throw some sand and some water or something on it. But I'm about being proactive and giving people the tools. And I'm very concerned about the smaller entities that, you know, the larger entities like Jefferson County, they could probably hire somebody outside um, like some of them do with me, you know, mm -hmm. they'll hire me. Um, but the smaller ones, but most of my entities are smaller ones because I don't know, maybe it's my Christian upbringing that I I'll take on things that mm -hmm. aren't making me a lot of money. <laughs> So, because I'm more concerned about them being able to do their sure. job and the, not because you can pay somebody to help you. Does the auditor's office look over the state's funding in any way? So, what we're responsible, we're on that other arm of us is we are the bookkeeper. Mm -hmm. So, we're responsible for making sure that the expenditures that come through, that they are in compliance. And some people feel like the auditor can. Um, control what people spend their money on, but it's the same circumstance. So the legislature sets that budget, like county commission set the budget. But you got to, but we do have that authority, which is a lot of people always knew me as somebody that I am going to be looking at your expenditures very mm -hmm. closely. And when you have an auditor like that, you tend to not try to slide anything through that looks kind of funny and even when stuff was legal and i was just wondering why did you buy that and i had a friend of mine that became my friend later after i left the auditor's office and he was oh, he was a sheriff and he he can remember everything i wrote him up about but and then i questioned him because i would say well why i said I, I, don't get upset i just want to know why are you buying that mm -hmm. <laughs> and so and and it does, and that is a way of curtailing waste. Sure. Because if somebody they know there's eyes, and I'm going to make sure that the public knows uh, about the spending, okay. because we're going to develop waste watch reports. Bookkeepers are the nosiest people you ever find. Because you got to balance the pennies. Yes, and they look at every expenditure, every expenditure that comes across the desk. Uh, the bookkeeper of counties, the uh, municipalities, wherever. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Board of Health, we also do Board of Health. There's a lot of entities that we audit. And they are very critical about this spending. They complain to me a lot when I was the auditor mm -hmm. and when I um, prepare financial statements. They still complain to me. Are you a CPA? No, I'm not a CPA. I've trained many of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, John Gilstrap. So <clears throat> there's a state auditor, that's the position you're running for, mm -hmm. and then there are auditors who work for the state auditor. Right. So how big is that staff? I, he did some cutting, so I'm not for sure of the total. I know that Roughly. as far as, but there's about 200. 200? Of, of, not of auditors. Okay. So we have other divisions of the auditor's office, too. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe about 40 in that chief inspector division that's responsible for the audit. So it's a big but staff. I'm, yeah, it's a big thing. Okay. So for a position like auditor, where is the partisan element to it? There are some jobs that just from the outside, it seems Democrat, Republican, it's numbers. I, where is the partisan element of that job? I have no idea. <laughs> okay. I mean, because it's technically it shouldn't be partisan. And this is why we – it's – it's being used as a stepping stone to get to other offices because people determine I need to win a statewide office and the auditor, nobody knows what the auditor does. That'll be an easy one. So I'll just switch parties and run as the dominant party, you know, whoever the dominant party. And, and I'm not saying that this was, this is just happening because, you know, the Republicans are in control because I've seen it over, you know, my career. It, it's, it is used. It should not be used. It is an office that should have to do with your qualifications. I'm the only one who has an accounting degree. Would you want me to operate on your foot? No. 
But, I, but I'd like you. I would like you to look at the insurance company's billing, though. <laughs> I mean, that foot operation. We, you know, there should there's a skill set that is involved with you being able. Um, Matt has to have a law law degree. Mm-hmm. Why? But is that <laughs> well because I practice law? Yeah. But and do you? But do general. you have to? Do you have yes. to? Yes. You have to actually because I know some counties that the assistant prosecutor actually goes in there. Aren't okay. you a part of a like administrator too? Well, I, yeah, absolutely, okay. I'm administrator, but 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 I don't go you court. need to know something about the people? Like, I guess I'm saying the reason you have to have it also is that you have people that are under you that are in the courtroom probably more than you are. Aren't yes, they? true. Okay, so how would it feel if Rob were the prosecutor over your? In, in, in I wouldn't you? like it. Because he doesn't have a law degree, so why why is it this way for the auditor's office? Is the point you're making? I, I, <laughs> you're you're not saying Matt doesn't need a degree. You're saying why don't right. we, why don't we require accounting background for the yes, auditor? Because I believe you do need a degree. Yes, and you need the experience. And you're and saying that the auditor should have an accounting that. background. Yes, and understanding the environment because it yes. is ninety nine. Only thing I can think of that is not related to accounting would probably be the IT division of the auditor's office, and mm-hmm. they're you know, for your computers, you know, keeping track of the, you know, yes. the technology. Mm-hmm. Everything else is accounting related. I, I I've looked and I cannot think of it. We are we do the payroll mm-hmm. accounting, the securities division. Those are financial documents, and actually, it was auditors <laughs> that were the ones that busted. You know, uh, I think it was Enron or something that. Oh, it's the Sarbanes Oxley Act. Mm-hmm. I think it might have been 2002. Um, those were auditors that caused those laws to be changed. So auditors go in and we find information that causes laws to be changed so that things are safeguarded. Good. What now, about the school board? We also audit the school boards. Was it? There was some. Um, we recently received some information about the school boards and some misuse of funds. Over the federal the money fr- from COVID. Yeah. So this, and this is one of my concerns, too, that I feel like we've dropped the ball on, is that making sure, like I said about earlier, we're doing this hand-slapping afterwards when we should have passed down the guidance, even if it required doing some virtual trainings online to make sure that everyone understood how that money was to be spent. Then you, not to say there is an excuse when you don't spend it properly, but you have more excuse when you're like, well, I didn't know. Mm-hmm. But ignorance but is no provi- defense of the law. It is no defense, right. but I feel like we all should be in partnership together or this, or it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. State and local government, it's not going to work the way it should in the best interest of the citizens if we don't work in partnership. Not just being a heavy hand, but working in partnership. And that's the difference in... Um, so I was, uh, I worked under Glenn Gaynor, who was a big advocate about cons- uh, customer service. Mm-hmm. And that's probably why during my audits I did training as well. And I would just try to, um, sometimes I'd work on stuff at home if I'd help people too much while, you know, while I was there training. But I knew that if I sat down right then and talked to them, help find solutions to the problems that I'm finding, that when I came back the next year, hopefully those things would be fixed. We would be on the right track. The money would be more safeguarded. Because I always work for the people of West Virginia, not really. So I have a question for you in regards to some things some candidates have said. Uh, Marshall Wilson, he's running for governor of the Constitution Party. He said, first day I'm in office, we're going to audit every single department. Is that done by the auditor of the state of West Virginia, or does that fall under some other independent auditing wing? So legislative auditors always done those performance Mm -hmm. audits, but they changed the law this last time, which I'm a little leery about. Uh, does that keep the auditor? So you know every expenditure comes through to us. Mm-hmm. We collect a lot of data. Does that keep the auditor from um, 
being able to audit the state of education, audit the state of of the foster care system. I I personally don't think so, but you know, I guess I'll wait until they decide that they want to call me on the carpet. Am I going to do one of those reactive things? But it but it's about the spending. It's about I feel like we're we are definitely in a time right now where we need a balancing of power and where I'm really this is a political position, but I'm not really political because right currently I work for Democrats and uh, Republican sheriffs, uh, and I really don't know who's a Democrat or Republican, just to be honest. I'm sure because you don't ask them, not, yeah. Yeah, no one asks me, oh, you're a Democrat, I can't have you come and help me. No one's ever said that. Mm -hmm. And so I always stayed out of politics before. Um, but when Mr. Gaynor didn't run the first time, I, I said, you know, I can, I can do this job. And then I learned what politics was about. <laughs> and it changes your way. Ask Matt. He's learned too recently. Ooh, it changes you. It, ch it does. It changes the way you think when mm -hmm. you go in that, that booth now. <laughs> well, I, I presume the position you were asking why it's, why it's political, John. I, I presume it's because if you are a Republican and there's another Republican uh, administration somewhere around the state that you're supposed to be auditing and you let something go because they are Republican, but you are harder on the Democrat. I, I presume that's where the concern comes in about the politics of the office. That's why you need somebody that has been a professional mm -hmm. and has been independent and has done this work because there is no doubt. You can ask people in my own party. I, this mouth doesn't say shut about the things that they do. But the state auditor, I'm going to guess, is okay. not actually auditing. Right, the state auditor is managing the people who are doing the actual right. auditing. But the state auditor of a of a certain party could order their auditors to mm -hmm. overlook a few things mm -hmm. from this particular political party here because we don't want that getting out. In theory, you and, could. In theory, you could I guess. And we could happen. also, which happens, is be silent when other people are complaining about. Because I don't know how much things I heard about justice. I said on the TV, though, with that federal money was coming out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I have to keep up with the rules about the federal money and the state money that comes. And when he gave out the, it was supposed to be, remember the $100,000 is supposed to be the um, hero pay? Mm -hmm. And it, he was telling the local governments they could give money to, like, the grocery store workers and stuff. And I told the ones I dealt with, I said, you cannot do that. Somebody needs to go tell him you cannot do that. And so uh, we were looking, and I was trying to figure out, is this federal money or is this state money he's passing down? Because I, I have to know the distinction. Distinction, mm -hmm. And I contacted his office. They kept saying, oh, it's state money, it's state money. Well, when my entities that I work for – Gave me the letter he sent. I said, this is going to be federal. I said, because he has given you the same requirements that was with, this is with the first group of money, the COVID money. He's given the same requirements. A lot of them sat on it for a long time because they didn't know how they, they were confused. They didn't know what they could spend it on. It ended up being federal money. And he just reimbursed his contingency, which is another thing. I've been around long enough do y'all remember the Budget Digest money? No. What was that? Oh, like his contingency money. So they This was under did, the Justice Administration? Yes. They, they gave, because it was like the pork belly, I guess. And so senators and the representatives, they came and that's how I knew some of the names. I knew Osha Crago. He was in my right. area. His name was on all the letters of money coming down. Okay, I remember that name associated. And so they complained about that. Now, this, the D Democrats were in control then. They complained about that, and they cut it out. But it has kind of re uh, more, it came a, a metamorphosis into contention. And the legislature gives them, that's what kind of gets me upset sometimes about the legislature will sit around about the spending and stuff. Mm -hmm. and they're the ones that set the budget. So if you're concerned about spending, then you need to change the laws. That That is your responsibility with the laws. You're not going to be able to do it by jumping over here in the auditor's race when you don't have an accounting degree or any auditing experience. 
So get you know, do your job while mm -hmm. you're in office. <laughs> That's what Marianne Claydor, or, or if you want to go with full name across, Marianne Brubach Claydor, if you were a high school uh, mate of hers back in the day, right? So right. they still find you. Right. Running a uh, candidate for uh, auditor, has experience uh, in the office uh, previously as well. What have you been doing since you left the office professionally? You mentioned you're still do, doing st some kind of work Yes, like this. I started a, uh, my own business, and I provide guidance on some of the funds, you know, and um, prepare financial statements, which I don't think people understand the complexity involved in preparing a financial statement. I know I don't. And, uh, it, it's a lot. And I'm the one that sees these underlying records. Transparency is a big buzzword these days. But transparency is only as good as the underlying records. I know that there are people that miss posting uh, their receipts. I know there are people that miss posting their uh, expenditures. I know there are people who don't do not balance their books back to the bank. And there are people, who, and, then, and in the sheriff situation, the county clerk and the sheriff, they have to balance their numbers together. That's the type of work I've been doing. And there's been a great turnover in a, because people my age are retiring. And the training is just not getting filtered down the way that it should. Mm -hmm. And we also need, one of the, my goals is to make sure that we go into these entities and we evaluate how they are accounting for our money and making sure that when you're in an office that only has a couple people, that we tighten that as best we can, where the council has to be more involved, the county commission has to be more involved. I had a entity that I used to audit and I do their, still do their financial statement. And the administrator was also the bookkeeper. Well, we would allow, by, we would allow, um, the county commission to just approve a list. In that case, I would not allow as an auditor for them to just approve the list. I said, I need you to look at every single one of these bills because I trust him, but I don't want to give him the opportunity that if something goes on in his life that, you know, he would be able to take money. So I said, I will need you to look at every single one of them and I will need you to sign off on them. Mm -hmm. And they listened. <laughs> I have about uh, two minutes left. Okay. Quick answer on, on this one, and then we'll let you do a final minute to, to the audience. Uh, in your time as an auditor for the state, do, do you would you agree that there's a lot of waste in government, or would you disagree with that statement? Oh, yes. Why did you think I said I'm going to put out these waste reports? Mm -hmm. Because people don't – it's a little shaky because I know I'm going to get some backlash, but I am a very strong individual. I went in for 22 years going in doing audits and investigating embezzlements. Uh, you think I'm afraid? Oh, oh, my prison ministry. I go into the prisons, maximum security, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So you think that I'm going to be afraid of some politicians? No. I'm not going to be afraid of politicians. And it's time for a change. It's time for us to make sure that we have somebody in there that's going to stand up for the people. Because I personally am tired of the BS. Some of those folks you may see in your prison ministry later on. <laughs> <laughs> and I always say, and I will preach the gospel to them just like I do anybody else. I don't, you know, we don't go in to judge anybody for what it is that, because by the grace of God, it could be us. But you will go in to audit them, by the way. <laughs> so on that note, I've got 30 seconds left. How can we find about uh, your campaign? You can go to auditthestate.com. You know, I know there's been a... But I, that's what I had started with in January. Mm -hmm. Auditthestate.com, uh, on Facebook. The Facebook link's on there. The Twitter's link's on there. They can find out information about our platform. And, well, nice and to Google meet you. us. <laughs> Very nice to meet you, Mary. And thanks Thank for making you. the drive. And your okay. husband, too. I think he's waiting in the, in the parking lot, right? <laughs> yes. He, yeah, if he, if he's there. listening, you could have come in. It would have been okay. Yeah. Been. Good luck to you on Election Day. Okay, thank you. Mary Ann Clayton Robach for... Uh, Robot Clater, so I had that backwards for auditor in the state. We're back with more after these. <laughs>